Welcome all EuroLeague fans to another great episode of The Quarter with Kyle Hines. Today we have a very special guest, um, my former teammate, one of my most favorite people in the whole wide world, my guy, Alec Peters. Alec, what's up, man? How's everything? I'm doing great, especially since you just, one, called me very special guest. Got the very you additive are. in there. And then <laughs> to be one of Kyle Hines' most favorite people in the whole world. I hope that you don't give that title out too often. So I, nah, I man, only, only, <laughs> only to a few, man. You're definitely one of them. You're definitely up there, man. So for, first off, how how are you enjoying, um, you know, Boscoia? You know, this is your first season there. How, how are you enjoying um, your time there so far this season? It is as different as you could get from the first two years in Europe for me, obviously when we were in Moscow together, that was my first experience with, with everything. And then going from there to Istanbul, you know, two big cities, two of the biggest cities in the world. And now, you know, I'm sitting here in a city of a couple hundred thousand people. Uh, You know, I don't ever sit in traffic. I don't ever have to wait (laughs) anywhere to do anything. You know, it's a complete, complete 180 from uh, what I've experienced the last two years, but I've loved, I've grown to love it. I mean, you know, I'm from a small town, so this kind of lifestyle is, is, is what I'm used to. And uh, I've enjoyed obviously the season so far with, uh, with Basconia having a little bit more of an elevated role and, uh, you know, getting to enjoy playing some great basketball as of late. Now let's, let's take the time, the EuroLeague time machine back a little bit to the summer. Um, and when you were deciding, you know, on going to a team and, and making the transfer, um, you know, what intrigued you about, you know, playing in, playing for Basconia um, and, and the opportunity there? Well, it all started uh, summer league of 2018. I just finished my rookie mm-hmm. year, uh, you know, played well towards the end of the year in Phoenix. Thought, you know, that it was going to, you know, parlay it into being hopefully another um, a second year there and another, you know, year to kind of prove myself that I belong in the NBA and uh, it was we were actually in Vegas for summer league. And I was playing for now Fenerbahce's coach, you know, Igor Kokoshkov at the time. Um, and I was getting, you know, calls and offers from these teams in Europe. And and, you know, Coach Atutis actually uh, from Seska actually called me in my Vegas hotel room. This is, this is like the day before one of our last summer league games mm-hmm. and kind of gave me the the final pitch on, you know, why I should make this move and why, you know, it would be really beneficial for me in my career. And uh, at the time I was, you know, you, I knew about Seska, I knew about EuroLeague, but you truly don't know until you, you've experienced it. So, yeah. you know, I, I took the call, I listened to what he had to say. And at the end of the day, I'm like, okay, you know, that's, that'd be a great, that'd be a great option for me, but you still have that pride. You know what I mean? That little pride that's like, you know, I want to make this work. I want to make, you know, this NBA thing work. And I actually um, talked to, uh, Igor, Coach Igor, about it, and actually um, Devin Smith, the old Maccabi player, was actually on the yeah. staff as well, uh, asking them about you know their experiences you know in Europe and things like that. And um, those conversations and, and the conversations in the following days, um, and kind of a little bit more self reflecting, uh, helped me make that you know what I was probably the most pivotal decision I could have made in my career at the time, and you know I'm, I'm really thankful for that and thankful that it turned out the way it did now you're in bass country um the bass county um and bass county is known for its unique kind of foods and kind of cuisines so is there is there anything you've experienced are you are you full every day going cheese and jamon or um you know what are you <laughs> what are you what are you eating there is there something have you found a favorite meal there yet well, one thing i can tell you and it's probably not a good thing is that wine's really cheap here Oh <laughs> being, man! Being, being, in wine, <laughs> being in wine country, you can go get yourself a nice bottle for a couple euros. So uh, that's that's treated me and Maddie, you know, my fiance, really well. Um, but no, it, what sucks though is that, like, you know, we're in Victoria, we're in Basque country, we're in you know this great food and wine scene, and and nothing's open, you know, right now. Yeah. Nothing, nothing you yeah, can't go course, experience yeah, anything. But we've uh, no, like anytime we go to the store, we we get some hamon, we get you know, we get the little cheese spread and. You know, we'll, we'll get a bottle of wine. We we enjoy ourselves every once in a while. So there's definitely no no shortage of that of that here. Um, you know, there's some great scenery here as well. Like you know, the view from my apartment in the city center. You got mountains on the outside of the town. Mm-hmm. You know, we you know we've been able to kind of take it in that way. Uh, we've tried to enjoy as much as possible. I feel like once the spring comes and things start to 
um, you know, get a little better situation wise around here, then, then we'll really see a, a different side of this place. How is your, uh, is your Spanish coming? Are you still locked into Google Translate? Or are you, are you relying on your Spanish, your Spanish one-on-one skills back at uh, Valparaiso? <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I thought I had a good understanding of Spanish. But when, when when they start talking so fast and here, especially there's a different accent about it. You, like you remember, you know, when Sergio would talk, yeah. you, you almost couldn't yeah. understand any word that Sergio Rodriguez would say. And so like it's it's almost, you know, you have to take your understanding of Spanish back to back to the basics and, and relearn a little bit. And I tell like my athletic trainers and all the physios and people at the club, like try and speak Spanish to me as much as possible. And if I don't understand it, I'll ask, you know, for you to say it in English. But that's kind of helped me learn. I, I do a good job. I can pretty much understand and read mm-hmm. anything. But if you were to, if you were to ask me to speak, I can't. I can't. I can't speak or. That's impressive. Know, at, That's so at, impressive. At the speed, it's not Russian. It's not Russian or Turkish. So things things go a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you go to a new team and you're 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 transferring to a new team, you know, there's kind of a almost an anxiety period. It's almost like you're like a new kid going to, you know, a new school or a new classroom. We have to get used to, you know, all different type of, you know, new things, whether it's not trying to find a seat on a plane or seat on the bus or the locker. We're trying to get everybody's names. Um, is there something, you know, that, um, you know, when you first got there, um, that was kind of almost like a, a shock to you? Like for me, I can give for my example is, I, you know, I've been in Moscow for the past seven years and I haven't driven a car in, in Europe because we have drivers, I haven't driven a car for the past seven years. So the first day they give me my car, I'm driving and, you know, I'm taking my sweet time, you know, I don't, I don't know that in Milan, Milan drivers are aggressive. So people are beeping at me, (laughs) trying to get me off the road and I'm in the car literally sweating. So, I mean, is there something, you know, that like when you first got there, that it kind of was almost like an initial shock for you or was difficult for you to kind of get over, get through? You were you were at 10 and 2 the whole ride, huh? Um, man, man, I was I'm stuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, man, you know, I haven't done it the last three years now. You know, the the big shock was was going to going to Russia right away. Um, mm-hmm. and then from Russia to Turkey, there was, you know, not as much shock because you kind of knew what to expect. But coming here, uh, I think like probably the the biggest shock was when you really start to get acclimated with the club, like all the little new rules that like, like here at Bisconia, there's, they just, there's a certain standard of rules and expectations and stuff that they expect you to follow, you know, no talking on your phone on the bus, like at dinner, you can't have your phone out. Um, Little things like that, that at first, like I had to get told like over and over again, you know, Hey, you know, this is, this is a little, little rule here. You got to follow this rule. You got to, you got to do this. You got to do that. Um, trying to think of any any big shocks when i started driving in turkey um having not driven in moscow and anything that that was a little bit like your experience you know you have very very busy aggressive aggressive people and uh, i think when i came back to the states after being in turkey i was almost too aggressive on the roads i had to like remember you know (laughs) i remember to use my blinker to change lanes i had to (laughs) i had to kind of relearn a little bit of that um but yeah uh coming here I was, it was almost like a, a pleasant shock to me, you know, going to the grocery store was a little bit more friendly to, to an American because there's more products yeah. here, I think that I'm used to. And, um, so I, I can't really think of any, any big, big shocks, um, that would have happened to me. But after the last three years, I feel like I'm just a, I'm a hired gun, man. Like I'm just a mercenary that, go, that goes, <laughs> that goes where they need me. Like I'm some, I'm some movie character. So <laughs> that's funny man that's funny now we we, we mentioned chacho and chacho's been a, a big help to me um and my family here in milan helping us get adjusted and getting comfortable you know with everything here um you know kind of giving me the lay of the land is there a teammate or somebody there that's kind of been helping you um you know get adjusted to to the new city and the new surroundings and how helpful has that been to have that person yeah i, I think I've been really fortunate each year uh, in my first year I'm having you, you know, Corey, Will, Chacho, Nando, Othello, like we, we, Danny, we had a, an unbelievable group of, of vets for me, you know, being the young mm-hmm. kid coming in and even in Turkey, you know, I, I was one of the newest guys that joined that team at Ephesus and uh, everybody had been there in the past. And this year we're all relatively new, but like Akile Polinaro has been 
you know, really, really helpful for me having been here the year before. Peria Henry, uh, mm-hmm. he'd been here the year before as well. Luca Vildoza. I mean, those guys, like any any question that I have, they they all have it pretty figured out because, you know, there's not much to figure out in this place, uh, in this city. But any food recommendations, uh, anything like that, they've been more than more than helpful for me. So, you know, I've, I've been really, really fortunate to have just great teammates the last three years. Now, you mentioned a little bit a little bit before about you being in Moscow and being in FS. You won the Euro League with Cheska, and last year when FS, you guys were the, the first place team in a regular season. Um, but Skonga has, you know, a winning tradition. But from the experiences that you've had with with winning the Euro League in Moscow and and pretty much being the top team last year um, with FS, you know, what are you looking to bring from those experiences that you can bring to to Pascogne and help kind of continue continue their winning tradition that they've been having? Yeah, in those last two seasons, I was the young guy. You know, I was the guy that was the role player, the 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 filler. You know, the glue guy that was, um, you know, put in spots here and there. You know, some minutes this game, a lot of minutes the next. And um, I really wanted to this next season try and and be that almost that veteran presence to be that, that yeah. stable presence, that consistent player. And Basconia offered me, um, you know, the position to do that and the, and the role to do that. And um, that's, that's something I've tried to take from those experiences, learn from, you know, you guys and learn from like Shane Larkin, Vasa Misic, Colonel Simone and those guys at FS to, to come and be that guy now here um, at Basconia with, you know, we have, you know, players that are younger than me. It's my first time having players that are, you know, truly young, like younger than me and me being one of the, um, the veteran presences after having two years in Europe uh, in, in Euroleague. So I, I've tried to take every experience that I've learned uh, from you guys and how consistent you guys were and how level headed and confident you guys stayed day to day in that approach and, uh, and tried to apply it this year for this team. I'm proud, man. My, my rookie is growing <laughs> up. My rookie is no longer a rookie. He's a vet, man. I'm a, I'm a proud vet now, man. Look at you, man. <laughs> year three, right? Isn't that what they say? Year three. That's when you can, that's when you get the vet tag. Yeah, man, you get your get your vet card, man. Now got officially, wings. got my wings. Uh, so last last question, um, you know, due to COVID, I mean, we talked about it a little bit before. You know, the fans have not been able to be in the arenas like they've had in past seasons. Um, you know, what is your message to the to the fans of of Wisconsin and the city of Victoria? Um, you know about you know uh you know about this season and, and just a message in general for them for them. I cannot wait to have fans back and have those people come back and, and, and be a part of our games. We had a little bit of a taste of it at the beginning of the year. They tried to, you know, put a couple, couple hundred people in the stands and it just, I guess, didn't work out that way. But man, like that arena, you know, I mean, you've seen, you know, we want to final four in that arena. Like that place yeah. can get packed it's, and it can get loud. Rocking. And man, I can't like, you know, nowadays, especially here with it being a smaller town, like when we go to the grocery store, we go out to do something like, People always give me the thumbs up, you know, all, you know mm-hmm. always telling me, you know, go Basconia. And um, there's just that presence here. And, you know, I want to feel that. I can't wait to feel that at the games, um, you know, that there's a special, you know, basketball feel in this town. And that it's just like they're just, you know, they're crazy about it. And um, to not have them at games is, is really a loss for us. It's, you know, it's a huge energy booster. I think it, it part of what creates a home court advantage for us is that atmosphere. And Agreed. I can't wait. I can't wait to to have them back. And I look forward to not just seeing them on the streets, but seeing them at games soon. Well, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you taking the time and stopping in, um, you know, having a quick conversation on the quarter. Um, I wish you best of luck, um, you know, much health, much success. And as always, man, we'll definitely talk again very soon. Thank you, man. Thanks for giving me those wings, letting me fly on my own, giving me all the tools and, 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 the, and the necessary uh, instruction and to be my uh, to be my own vet now. I appreciate you, man. Thanks for having me. Anytime, man. This is Kyle Hines signing out. All the Euroleague fans, make sure you check out our next episode of The Quarter with our very special next guest. Thank you.